Hi. Minilab Mark III is Arturia's newest entry-level multipurpose MIDI controller. It's designed to give you hands-on controls to interact with a DAW and its devices, as well as with Arturia's own software instruments. It's the follow-up to Arturia's very successful Mark II and is their latest offering for people looking for an inexpensive small MIDI controller with a lot of physical control types. It has a new small screen, a mix of faders and encoders as opposed to just encoders in the previous version, a built-in arpeggiator and new MIDI output to control hardware gear. It doesn't make any sounds on its own, but comes with a comprehensive software bundle, including Analog Lab Intro, Ableton Live Lite, and two software pianos. In this video, I'll take a look at what it can do, how well it interacts with software and hardware instruments and Ableton Live, and pros and cons compared to the competition. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Arturia sent Minilab 3 over for review, but as always, they have no say over the content of this video, no money changed hands, and they don't get to see it before it's published. Okay, let's start with an overview of the hardware. Minilab Mark III, like its predecessor, has two octaves of mini keys with good velocity sensitivity, but no aftertouch. It has eight RGB pads, which are sensitive both to velocity and to pressure. Now it doesn't have note repeat, but if you place a carefully configured arpeggiator before your drum kit, we get a software version of note repeat. Anyway, moving on, while it only has eight pads, it does support pad bank swapping, bank A and bank B, which can do different things, for example, in DAW mode or just play different drums when playing software or hardware kits. Instead of 16 encoders on the previous Minilab Mark II, you only get eight encoders, but you get four faders. The controller can have a few modes. In Arturia mode, it controls Arturia's own analog lab software. In DAW mode, it controls whatever DAW you're connected to. And in one of five user modes, you can control any software or hardware instrument you like, and you can customize the knobs, faders, and pads using Arturia's MIDI control center. More on the controller, when you hold shift, you can change the MIDI channel if you want using the keys, and these five buttons become transport control buttons for your DAW. This is tap tempo, this is loop, and then stop, play, and record. And then these three pads or buttons have functions as per the label. So this turns the arpeggiator on and off. This changes pad banks like we saw earlier, and program swaps controller mode. The LED screen is very small, but it is actually helpful because when your gaze is here, it's simpler than looking on the screen. You can do quite a few things with it, like selecting presets. We'll take a look at this later. And for example, in DAW mode, at least for Ableton Live, you see the name of the track. Knob names map automatically to the screen, so better to have it than not, certainly at this price. You've been seeing me use the push encoder under the screen. The pitch, bend, and mod strips are touch-based, as opposed to physical wheels on some other controllers. The hold button lets you hold chords as the name implies, and you can then mess around with different sound design parameters. These encoders are smooth, endless encoders, and this is a detent encoder, which you can also push to make a selection. Minilab 3's build seems very sturdy and good. It's all plastic and light, but not bendy or anything like that. There's no wobble on the faders or encoders. If anything, they're actually a little bit stiff. In terms of connectivity, Minilab 3 is powered by and sends data back and forth over USB, comes with a USB cable. It also has a sustain pedal input and also new for the MK3, a MIDI output, so you can use it with hardware synths or sound modules. And Minilab's built-in arpeggiator and chord mode work with external gear as well. So those are the physical aspects of Minilab 3. Before we look at the software bundle, let's see what it can do on its own, regardless of which software or hardware synth you use it with. Minilab 3 has a chord mode where you can program your own custom chord and then transpose it to program the chord. Just hold shift and hold, which is chord, and play a few notes. Make sure to start with a root note and you can then play chords.
Mini Lab 3 also has a built-in arpeggiator. I'll turn off chord mode and let's maybe pick a more appropriate sound. So you turn on the arpeggiator by hitting on and any chord gets arpeggiated. Hold works here too. And there are a few arpeggiator parameters which you can access with shift and a long press on hold. And you can edit these parameters either using the uh, detent encoder. So you can change the play direction. All the usual suspect options. And then uh, click again, change the time division, the relative speed of the arpeggiator. Swing. Gate length, the note length. This patch doesn't respond to that, but that works well. Then the overall rate or tempo. Sync, either internal or external. You can sync to an external device. There's no MIDI input, but you can sync over USB. Octave range. Now, you can actually edit these parameters using the encoders. There aren't any labels on the encoders, but when you activate the arpeggiator, the screen will show you where each parameter is. One thing about the arpeggiator, currently, if you hit hold, it will restart the arpeggiator clock every time you press a new chord. If you have good timing, it'll be fine, but if not, it won't sound great. If you use external clock from your DAW, then it'll work as expected. I asked Arturia about this, and they said they're going to make it so time is kept when you swap chords in a firmware update. And then finally, for the internal brains, before we get to controlling software, you can combine chord mode and the arpeggiator. If I hold this, you can feed the chord you programmed into the arpeggiator. Okay, let's take a look at the integration with Arturia's Analog Lab intro. As you may know, Arturia makes, I think, close to 30 now software instruments based on old analog gear, old digital gear, and their current synth pigments. Now, all of these are sold separately, but Analog Lab Intro includes a selection of several hundreds of presets from them. I've got a few software synths installed here, so I may have more presets than what you get just with a basic bundle. I think you get about 500 presets, but don't hold me to it. Now, the presets themselves sound exactly like the full-blown synths, you just can't enter the synth's user interface and edit its parameters. You only have access to what the knobs and faders let you control. One important thing to know if you want to control Analog Lab with a controller is make sure that the program you're on is the Arturia program. If you have that on, you can see the faders and knobs all communicate very nicely with the software, including showing you the parameter name on screen. The top four encoders are assigned to sound design parameters, the bottom four encoders are assigned to effect controls, and the faders are assigned to overall level and EQ controls. If you own a copy of the instrument, you can hit this little wheel, and if I move the window over, go to macro and hit learn. Now, you'll see a brief glimpse of this on the screen now. So, if you don't own the software synth or piano in this case, it'll tell you to purchase it separately. If you do own it, the controls will appear on screen and you can hit learn and assign more parameters to these four macros. Okay, let's go back to the main screen. So you start out at home. So this home screen is sort of like a simplified gateway into the different types of presets, whether by category, say of pianos, keys, or bass, and you can also have a taste by instrument. In this case, this is Pigments from Arturia, their flagship synth. Anyway, that's the basic browser, and the meat of the exploration is done here. You can just select presets from a list, sort by different categories, and yes, you can browse through this interface, and you can see an icon of the synth on screen. But you can also browse using this encoder, go through the presets and you'll see it on screen as well. If you wanna select a preset, just press. That's gonna go on for a while. Choose something else. 
And uh, if you hear something you like, you can favorite it with a long press or unfavorite it. And then shift lets you browse categories. So you can see I'm going through the top categories. I can dive in to a secondary category then dive into a list of presets. And if I want to go back, just hit back. Um, and if I'm satisfied with the category, just start browsing it. So that's the basics of Analog Lab. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. If you hit edit preset, you'll see a bunch of things that you can edit, a bunch of parameters that you can change for the preset. This is the effects chain for the patch. The third and fourth effects are always delay and reverb, but for effects one and two, you can choose from a list of effects. You can customize the effects and control the overall mix using the knobs on the panel. Now each preset you make can also be actually a multi. So you can go ahead and bring in another synth, another instrument even. Let's just go for say a CS80 patch. Let's just pick soft lead. And you now have a multi-layer patch. And you can adjust the relative level of each part in this multi separately. So that's Analog Lab and how you control it with MiniLab 3. Let's take a look at what a DAW integration looks like. Artoria has integrations with Ableton Live, Bitwig, Logic, FL Studio, Reason, and MiniLab 3 also has MCU, Mackie Control Universal Protocol, which is a standard DAWs like Pro Tools use. To use a DAW with this, just move it into DAW mode, and if the integration gods smile upon you, everything should work smoothly. I mentioned this earlier, you've got loop control, tap tempo, and transport control, stop, play, and record. In Ableton Live, record will turn on overdub if you're in session view and arrangement record if you're in arrangement view. The Ableton Live integration actually lets you get pretty far with the software with these relatively simple controls. If you turn the encoder, you move up and down scenes and if you hold shift and turn the encoder, you move left and right throughout the tracks. If I had more than eight tracks, then this window would also shift right and left. The window here is controlled by the eight pads when you're in bank A mode. And if I move to bank B, then these play notes. So I could go to my drum track and I see I still have my arpeggiator on. If I wanted more than eight instruments, by the way, using the pads, I could create a user template. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Anyway, back to Ableton Live, pressing the encoder with shift will arm a track or unarm it. And pressing the encoder when shift isn't pressed down will launch a scene if you have content on the grid, of course. Anyway, even though you only see a small sliver of the grid here, it's uh, pretty easy to start launching clips and looping. So for example, on tracks one through three, I've got three instances of Analog Lab. And yeah, tapping the pads is like tapping cells on the grid. You can move between the tracks. This is an Ableton Live instrument. And the eight knobs control the device parameters. And if I wanna record, just hit the pad. Recording can be quantized in Ableton, of course. Tap again to loop. And now I could swap tracks or swap scenes. So this controller can't do everything, but it's a nice little brainstorming setup. Regarding control of Ableton Live devices, you have control of the active device, the first eight parameters on the active device. You can't swap out devices. It would be nice if they added that. So if you had a chain of devices, if you could select different devices and you can't control more than eight parameters. Then finally, the faders control track level, sends to the reverb and delay and panning. And so we don't totally forget the arrangement. The encoder zips through the arrangement when you're in arrangement view as opposed to swapping scenes. When we were in session view, you can still swap tracks like this. Let's move on and take a look at how you can configure MiniLab 3 
in the control center. This lets you configure overall device settings in one tab and configure user templates in another. You'll want to configure user templates or controller maps if you want to control, say, a third-party synth where you want to send specific MIDI CCs using the knobs or the buttons. And then you've got a few general device settings. I'm not going to go over all of these, but probably the most important one is the one that disables templates. So by default, you want to be swapping programs probably a lot between Arturia if you use Analog Lab and a DAW, the templates won't appear until you enable them, one of the five or all the five templates. Once you do, you'll be swapping templates through the user template as well. And then customizing these templates is really easy. You just click the element that you want to customize and you can edit its parameters down here. So say for example, the faders. So if you know which CCs your synth expects, it's very easy to configure that here. One thing I wish they did add here is the ability to rename the knobs and faders so that you could see on screen what it is that uh, you're controlling. And then one more miscellaneous item before we head out to the pros and cons. When you connect to your computer, you'll see four ports in and four ports out. The first port sends out regular MIDI from the controller. For the second port, ignore the in, out sends MIDI out the MIDI port. MCU is for Mackie control. So this is what you want to talk to if your DAW supports it. And then don't tick this. This is for Analog Lab to chat with the controller. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons for Mini Lab 3. First, if you're okay with two octaves and mini keys, as well as touch strips for mod and pitch bend, I think Mini Lab Mark 3 is an excellent combination of keys and controls. I don't miss the additional eight knobs on the previous version of Minilab, and it's nice to have faders to spice things up a bit. It would have been better if this had dedicated transport controls, but the fact that they're marked on the panel and ready to go with shift somewhat, but not totally makes up for it. Its closest competitors are probably the MPK Mini 3 and the Novation Launch Key 25. Both have more cramped keys, but take up less space, so they're a bit more portable. MPK Mini has a joystick as opposed to mod and pitch wheels or strips. And in terms of hardware controls, it has the same number of encoders, pads, and keys, but Mini Lab 3 has four more faders. The Launch Key Mini has two rows of pads, which may be important if you do clip launching in Ableton Live and to access 16 drums at a time or to play scales. And Launch Key Mini has even more Ableton Live functionality than this. It also has a few cool generative features for the arpeggiator, but doesn't have a screen. Even though the screen on Mini Lab 3 is tiny, I do like that the parameter and preset names appear here. Despite its size, I find it really useful. The MPK doesn't have MIDI output, by the way, and the Launch Key Mini has dedicated transport buttons, which the MPK does not, and the Mini Lab 3, like I said, sort of has them with a shift. In terms of pad layout and feel, I guess it's a matter of personal preference. I don't finger drum much. The MPK's pads are kind of like these, maybe a bit more sensitive, while the launch keys are much lighter. So it depends on what kind of feel you prefer. The built-in chord function and arpeggiator are welcome brains, especially since you can play any custom chord you like. The arpeggiator has good basic controls. There's no note repeat here, but I showed you how you can sort of fake it with the plugin. And this doesn't have a built-in sequencer if that's important to you. Finally, on the hardware side, I found myself accidentally touching the strips when reaching for these buttons and this encoder. Since it has been like this in Minilab Mark II, I guess not a lot of people complain about it. And you can disable these if it bothers you too much and you don't need them, of course. The bundled software package is nice. Analog Lab sounds great in my opinion and goes way beyond its analog name. And Ableton Live is a great way to start making music and the integration with Ableton Live is pretty good. I especially like the clip launching and recording, which lets you jam and play with ideas pretty quickly. So that's it for Minilab. There are buyer's guides and plenty more tips and ideas in my book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.